Hey guys, uh, I'm Rob Alwyn, founder and CEO of LifeWise, and you've been invited to jump into our locker room. It is a weekly call where we share a lot of information about what's going on in the big game of life. You know, I have the opportunity to be one of the coaches and to speak information into your heart and into your mind. I hope tonight that you uh, take something with you that you've learned, that you've gotten from this call. Uh, I wanna start off with something called Consider This. I know that this is going to be a really large encouragement to some of you, and it's fun little factoids to boot. But how many of you knew this about Lucille Ball? Everybody loves Lucy, right? Well, when Lucille Ball began studying to be an actress in 1927, she was told by the head instructor of the John Murray Anderson Drama School, try anything but this profession. Anything, how about that? She ended up becoming one of the biggest stars on screen that there's ever been. In fact, all these years later, it's still in syndication. Everybody loves Lucy. Anyway, so check this out. A couple other big stars in 1959, Universal Pictures executive dismissed two actors, said that they would never make it. You wanna know who those actors were? Clint Eastwood and Burt Reynolds. <laughs> how about that? Thomas Edison was probably the greatest inventor in American history. Don't you know when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, it took him over 2,000 experiments before he got it to work. A young reporter asked him how it felt to fail 2,000 times. He said, I never failed once. I invented the light bulb. It just happened to be a 2,000 step process. William Rudolph, this is good, I'm gonna close with this one. William Rudolph was the 20th of 22 children. She was born prematurely and her survival was doubtful. When she was four years old, she contracted double pneumonia and scarlet fever, which left her with a paralyzed left leg. At age nine, she removed the metal brace she had been dependent upon and began to walk without it. By 13, she had developed a walk, which doctors said was a miracle in itself. That same year, she decided she was going to run. She entered a race and came in last place. For the next several years, every race she entered, she came in last place. Everyone told her to quit. It's useless. Why do you keep running when you always come in last? One day, she was not in last place. The next race, she was in the middle of the pack. And then, from then on, she went from the middle to actually winning the race. Eventually, this little girl, who was once crippled, was told she would never walk again and went on to win not one, not two, but three Olympic gold medals. Don't listen to the naysayers, folks. Don't listen to the people that rain on your parade. Don't listen to the people that say, weren't you in some other thing? You bet I was. Until I found LifeWise, I had made myself a commitment that I would do my very best. With what I know, I would move forward. And when I knew a little more, as my dear sister Amy had taught me, when you know a little bit more, you get to do a little more. When you know better, do better. Each and every one of us has been through a series of situations where we did our absolute very best every step of the way. And one day we got our breakthrough, a breakthrough that would be called Life Wise. Now I wanna take the remainder of the time that we have together and I want to share with you, first off, I wanna read from my Bible, and it comes from Matthew 6, and it is verse 33, and it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In other words, let's keep our eyes fixed on the Lord. We don't have to ask for an individual thing. What it is is if we're in Papa's will, if we are moving forward doing what's right for the kingdom, if we're doing what's right for the least of these, well, God would want you to have it all. God doesn't want to withhold anything from those that are living in his will. 
And so tonight I want to talk about a message that I was inspired. Our, our sister church that we go to, our primary church, of course, is in Arkansas. But when we were in Florida, we go to a church called Journey. And the lead pastor there is Pastor Scott. He's a humble, powerful, beautiful man with a big heart for the Lord. And I get great notes. I always leave there. And today I was re-listening to his message. And I think there'll be several more coming because the wisdom that flows out of that incredible pastor is something that needs to be shared with you all. But he was so convicted. He said, I'm going to share a message with you that can change your life for the rest of your life, can literally unlock every door in your life. And it's one of the most profound, powerful things I've ever shared with anyone. He says, but honestly, you'll probably not think so when I first mention it to you. You'll be like, really that? What? And I thought, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. What is it? Daily faithful obedience. Daily faithful obedience obedience. So let's talk about that. First off, I'd like to talk about the most important part of the phrase, daily faithful obedience to God. You know, folks, so oftentimes it's our lack of obedience. It's all throughout the Old Testament with the Israelites. They're not obedient. Things suck. They're obedient. And heck, I mean, you had, you had the leader of the free world, the leader of Egypt, essentially hand over the entire wealth of the most powerful nation in the world when the people got obedient. Pastor Scott reminded us that so oftentimes that we're not daily faithfully obedient to the Lord. So oftentimes we're obedient to ourselves. And so anyway, I want everybody to think about what we do on a daily basis to praise God. What do we do on a daily basis to get closer to God? For me, I'm just going to tell you, I like to sit in a jacuzzi and I like to talk to Pop. I like to share my life. I, I like to ask God what he thinks would be best for my life, for our company, for our family. And so daily, not when I feel like it, daily, I sit and I have quiet time with the Lord. I think that if we are daily, faithfully obedient to being in a close relationship with the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, the omniscient omnipowerful, omnipresent, Lord of Lords, that it gives you your power and your peace. I think that it would also be important to note to you today that are we daily praising the Lord, not just asking the Lord, praising the Lord. Do we daily praise the Lord? Do we daily spend time with the Lord? Do we get into the Lord's word? Are we in fellowship with him and other believers? I want to take it a step farther and I want to ask you this. Are we daily, faithfully obedient to our spouse? I love my Ronnie. And every day I tell her that I love you, baby. I couldn't imagine life not waking up beside her on, on an everyday basis. And every day I don't take it for granted. She may not know always, but I'll I'll open up my eyes. I'll look out that window. I'll see that it's light. That's what gets me up, not an alarm clock. And then I look down at my beautiful bride. I look over at my two little furry babies that sleep in our bed. And I begin to praise the Lord for another day to serve him and to love my wife and to be grateful for my children and our businesses. I want to know this. Are you daily faithful and obedient to your business? Are you daily faithful, obedient to this gift that you've been given? You know, in the Bible, it talks about that when God has been good, when God has been gracious, when God has blessed us with much, he expects much. Now, I'm just going to put this into a life-wise scenario. You've been given an opportunity of timing to be with extraordinary people, with extraordinary products, with the greatest compensation plan I've ever seen before in my life, with the greatest affordability, with free shipping, with five nights a week live support system. There is a system at your fingertips. It's not just people telling you, hey, sign up, buy a big pack and good luck, Chuck. It's five days a week nurturing, five days a week encouragement, five days a week uplifting messages. 
You're being washed in hope. You're being loved on, prayed for, cared for. People around us need more than us. Put that in the comments. People around us need more than us. We're not the opportunity. The system is, the prayer is, the servant leadership is, the ideas are flowing, hope is abounding. They need to see the social proof of other people locking arms and moving towards their vision and their dreams. That's what people need to see. They don't just need to hear you talking about bye, 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 bye. I'm not saying any of you do that, but maybe one or two of you do. So listen, I want everybody in our company to be daily, faithfully obedient to your calling. Daily, faithfully obedient to taking care of your one and only body. I got a few more notes for you. I can't control my obstacles. I can't control my obstacles. It's true. The car that pulled out in front of you, you have no control. The person that criticized you for no good reason whatsoever, they're having a bad day, you had no control. The rock that flew out of that guy's lawnmower that busted out your windshield, you had no control. It's not a victim statement, it's a factual statement. I can't control my obstacles, but I can control my output. But I can control my output. I need to shift my focus to output. I need to shift my focus to output. I can control how much output comes out of me. I may not be able to control those obstacles, but I have the opportunity to control my output. Surrender your will to God's will. Surrender my will to God's will. That's where the obedience needs to be. We need to be obedient to God's will and plan. How many of you have tried your plan? How's it going? Here's what I know to be true. At 57, almost 58 years of age, my will sucks compared to God's will and plans for my life. And the quicker we can get there, hear me up 20 somethings, the quicker you can shift from your will to his will, you will have a hundred times better life when you do that. Obedient to God's will and plan. Put this into the comments. When we are obedient, God responds with provision. When we are obedient, God responds with provision, protection, and abundance. On the other side of obedience is God's provision. You know what happens when we're not obedient? We go, what's going on? Why are things so hard? Why should God reward lack of obedience or rebellion or selfishness or self-centeredness? Do you know why this company is so attractive? To all of us, because it's here that we hear the truth. The truth sets you free, but not everybody likes to be set free. We've seen some people come and go, not very many of them, but we've seen a few. They may not have been seeking the truth. They might have been seeking for something for themselves. Remember what I read in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom. Some people are, but seek first me, but seek first something special just for me. Don't underestimate the power in obedience. Don't underestimate the power in obedience. There is beauty, there is harmony, there is balance, there is happiness, there is significance, there is pleasure in obedience. Surrender is good. When we obey God, God delivers, delivers on his promises, can't wait to bless, can't wait to strengthen, can't wait to lift you up and have you be honored. God's plans are so much greater than our plans and God has got so much in store for us. All right, anyway, love you, God bless you. You guys have a great evening, bye-bye.